The supreme art of war is to subdue the enemy without fighting. In Central Asia, water is at the heart of conflict. The regional states depend on one another for their natural resources and energy needs. Tensions are sharpest in the densely populated Fergana Valley, where Uzbekistan, Kyrgyzstan and Tajikistan converge. Every so often, things get so heated that violence becomes unstoppable. More than 70 border conflicts took place between 2011 and 2015. In every encounter, Russia stepped in as a mediator and forced a ceasefire. Still, a permanent agreement has remained beyond reach. In the most recent fighting, in April 2021, attack helicopters, tanks and mortar shells raged across the area, leaving over 50 dead and more than 40,000 displaced. It was the heaviest skirmish seen in years, and it retells the tale of how confined conflicts can ignite water wars across the wider periphery. I'm your host Shirvan and welcome to Caspian Report. Today's video is sponsored by Endel, an app that provides soundscapes for focus and relaxation. If you have a hard time concentrating for longer periods of time or switching off properly from it, then Endel could be a remedy. The app uses AI technology that is neuroscience patented and according to Endel, they generate personalized soundscapes. So the app reacts to the time of the day, the weather, and even your heart rate if you have a smartwatch to pair with the app. For me though, Endel has been useful in researching and writing content. I don't have to think about what soundtrack I'm going to play to get to work. I will often just use Endel and start working. Now the first 100 people to download Endel at the link in the description below will get a free week of audio experiences. Five sovereign nations emerged in Central Asia after the collapse of the Soviet Union, the boundaries of which were artificially established by the Soviet leadership to impair independent localized rule. The nodding and twisting of borders had been meticulously drawn across geographic and ethnic characteristics, oftentimes preventing coherence and instilling resentment. The intent was to make the whole space dependent on a powerful mediator from outside the region. Moscow played the part of an arbitrator during the Soviet era and has remained the single most influential player to date. During all that time, the Russians have always sought to ensure that no regional house would ever become powerful enough to challenge Moscow's authority. It's divide and rule with fierce efficiency. Nothing in Central Asia happens without Russian endorsement. As newly independent countries working to establish their own economies and political institutions, the states in Central Asia are in a constant struggle to define and secure their man-given borders. Nowhere is this contest more evident than in Fergana Valley. In this triangular space, Two rivers meet to make for a lush, green, fertile basin that is ideal for large settlements, agriculture and heavy industries. When viewed from above, it is easy to see why this green plain, surrounded by steep mountains and dry steppes, houses about 14 million people, or about a quarter of Central Asia's total population. Fergana Valley is an oasis of life and it boasts a population density 40 times higher than the regional average. Historically, the area has acted as a regional breadbasket. But not all is well in paradise. What cannot be seen from the skies are the scars running across the valley. The way national borders are shaped, tangling regional needs and interests in a knot, make it one of the most routinely contested territories in the world. The Soviet leadership divided the valley among Uzbekistan, Tajikistan and Kyrgyzstan. In times past, these borders formed no obstacle to the movement of people and goods. Under the joint control of the Soviet Union, boundaries in Central Asia mainly existed on paper. However, as Soviet authority declined, 
the new independent Union republics suddenly had to secure their national parameters. The knotted, twisted jumble of borders and enclaves in a highly ethnically diverse region made for a deadly concoction. As the Central Asian states traded in communism for national identity, the ethnically heterogeneous nature of the valley became a base for territorial friction. Hardening borders turned several enclave communities into ethnic minorities with restricted access to their supposed native homelands. Still worse, each state based its territorial claims on different Soviet maps, sometimes using military maps and sometimes using civilian maps, but more often than not using charts from different years. As a result, most boundaries in the Fergana Valley remain unsettled. Uzbek, Tajik and Kyrgyz lawmakers are still negotiating the demarcation of national borders. It's an excruciatingly difficult process. Tensions persist over the ownership of ethnic communities, some of which are enclaves. Moreover, there are disputes regarding control over natural resources and in many cases access to those assets. Crude oil, natural gas, and mineral wealth make up the most contested resources. But one of the most heated disputes involve water. Each nation competes for access to the region's rivers and canals. Sometimes things get so riled up that local communities resort to violence. Between 2011 and 2015, in the span of just four years, more than 70 border conflicts took place. Most skirmishes had to do with the shared water resources. Though most conflicts came to a halt, post-Soviet regional dynamics have persistently fueled competition and distrust among the nations in the Fergana Valley, leaving conflict not up to a mere misunderstanding. When the communist order collapsed, national interests took center stage. Previously shared resources became contention points between separate national entities. The newly independent nations left old regional systems to pursue policies that remained entirely within their political sovereignty. Regardless of their effort, however, the Central Asian countries could not escape the specter of Moscow's designs. Under Soviet rule, the countries operated within collective power grids that spread the power-generating effort according to each nation's local resources. Tajikistan and Kyrgyzstan developed hydropower dams, Kazakhstan focused on coal power plants, while Uzbekistan and Turkmenistan exploited their natural gas resources. Today, Tajikistan and Kyrgyzstan still generate close to 90% of their electricity through hydropower. The Amudarya and Sirdarya rivers, originating in Kyrgyzstan and Tajikistan, make up the most important rivers for hydropower generation. However, when glacial and snowmelt dependent reservoirs stop filling up in winter, these upstream nations experience regular national blackouts. It is nearly impossible to boost GDP growth when power outage is a reoccurring issue. On the other hand, the abundance of water grants the two considerable leverage over the downstream nations. Uzbekistan, occupying most of the plain in the Fergana Valley, requires generous amounts of water to feed its vast cotton fields. The Amudarya and Sirdarya rivers are critical to Uzbek agriculture, particularly its cotton production. Uzbekistan is one of the world's top 10 exporters of cotton and the industry is one of the largest sources of revenue for the government. Meanwhile, Kyrgyzstan and Tajikistan, in their quest for electricity security, have proposed the construction of multiple dams along the rivers flowing into the Fergana Valley. The upstream nations have developed only around 10% of their hydropower potential. However, mega projects like the Tajik Rogun Dam, which would mark the world's highest dam at 335 meters, could in theory free the Tajiks from their reliance on energy imports. Kyrgyzstan has similar hydropower plants. But the point is that the two upstream nations look to their rivers as a remedy for their energy security. 
Uzbekistan for its part bitterly opposes Kyrgyz and Tajik plans to build dams upstream, claiming that such hydropower projects would damage the socio-economic well-being of 33 million Uzbeks. Lawmakers in Tashkent argue that the proposed upstream dams could decrease the summertime water flow by 20%, while increasing the water flow in the winter by 45%. The risk of crop failure and seasonal flooding of its agricultural heartland has led Uzbekistan to threaten its upstream neighbors with armed conflict. Adding weight to the threat, shared resources are weaponized as political tools. Uzbekistan periodically restricted its natural gas and electricity exports, while Tajikistan and Kyrgyzstan occasionally decreased the downstream flow of water. Fortunately, after a change of guard in Uzbekistan's leadership in 2016, relations between the Fergana Valley neighbors have taken a turn for the better. Uzbek officials have negotiated dam project agreements with Kyrgyzstan and Tajikistan that grant Tashkent a say in the year-round flow of water. These deals have already borne their first results, and as a consequence, part of the proposed Rogun Dam came online in 2018, nearly 40 years after construction began. But although diplomacy can negotiate national interests, it can never fully erase them. Last April, a border conflict erupted in the vicinity of Foruh, which is a Tajik enclave located within Kyrgyzstan. Both sides had laid claim to a reservoir and pump station situated by the local river. Control over the assets would grant one greater say in shaping local irrigation. When the Tajiks placed surveillance cameras at the water facility, opposing Kyrgyz protesters came out swinging with rocks and sticks. Before long, border guards joined the fray with guns and mortars. Each side accused the other of firing first, and within hours, attack helicopters, tanks and mortar shells raged across the area, leaving over 50 dead and more than 40,000 people displaced. It was the heaviest fighting seen in years. And even though the skirmish quickly subsided, it was a rude reminder of how tense the situation is. Still interesting, Foruh had been part of the border negotiations where Kyrgyz policymakers tried to force their Tajik counterparts to renounce territorial claims surrounding the enclave or swap the ethnically Tajik enclave for another territory. However, the talks had remained stuck at an impasse and the skirmish may have been part of the negotiating tactic to raise the stakes. At the same time, Downstream Uzbekistan is more than happy to see its upstream neighbors fight among themselves because this grants the Uzbeks greater leverage in future negotiations. But the Tajik Kyrgyz skirmish also illustrated another point, namely how confined water disputes can threaten region wide stability. In the Fergana Valley, where borders tear through communities like shells tear through armor, climate change and demographic growth are set to increase pressure on the shared water systems. Political efforts can mitigate these resources and ethnically driven dilemmas, however ambiguity and distrust can separately be more than enough to drive nations to war. In the Fergana Valley, these factors come together to form a highly flammable source of conflict. And in a world of national interests, there is always an insatiable thirst for power. I've been your host Shirvan from Caspian Report. If you like what we do, please leave a like, comment and subscribe. Thank you for watching and Saul.